In this video, we're going to talk about the kinematics equation, or in other words, the equations of motion. There are four equations of motion that we're going to talk about here, and these equations are used to solve problems where the acceleration of an object is going to be constant. If the acceleration is not constant, if it's changing or varying, then we can't use these equations. We're really not going to address any problems that have a, a varying acceleration. These would take a little bit higher level physics that is involving uh, calculus. So before we get to these equations, let's just revisit the variables involved in motion. It's really based on these variables that these equations uh, come from or they're derived. Now these equations are going to be based on displacement, velocity, acceleration, and then there's a fourth variable which is really included in all of these variables that is time. So it's these four variables. And just to revisit the equations that kind of go along with these uh, different variables here, displacement is going to be equal to uh, the change in position, or in other words, a final position. I'm using the letter x to represent just a position in an x-axis or along a straight line, minus a position initial or, or an initial position there. Velocity, on the other hand, is going to be equal to this change in position, or in other words, displacement over a change in time. Or you could have just put d displacement over t. Both of those will work. So that's our equation for velocity. And then acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. And we could also say, uh, whenever you see that delta symbol, that triangle, that's just referring to a final minus an initial. And so I could write, anywhere where I see a delta, I could expand it, just like I expanded this one, to be a final minus initial. And so on that note, another way that I could write displacement up here, I could just say delta x, although some people use the letter D to indicate displacement. So these are kind of the basic equations of motion, and it's from these basic equations that our new larger equations are going to come from. Now why would we ever want to use a larger equation in the first place? Why wouldn't we just always use these equations? Well, because sometimes we're going to need to solve a problem where there are some variables that are missing. For example, if we wanted to know velocity, or maybe the final velocity of an object, but we didn't know time, uh, it would be pretty tough to do that with these equations that we have right here. And so the four kinematics equations are right here. So these are, again, these are ways that we take those simple equations to kind of expand them a little bit. Now our first equation here is actually based off of our acceleration equation. It's just a way to rearrange it. So if you remember, there's our acceleration equation. So this is just kind of a rearrangement of that equation. The rest of them are kind of combinations of things here. And the one thing that is similar about each one of these equations is they're going to have four different variables here. So if I look at the first one, I have v final, v initial, acceleration, and time. That's four different variables. Down here I have, on the second one, I have displacement, initial velocity, time, and acceleration. I have time again, but again, this is just four different variables. Same thing as we keep on going down. And so the trick here and we're sol when we're solving problems is to identify which of these equations is going to be best suited for the problem you're trying to solve. Now generally, uh, when you're solving a kinematics problem, you're going to have three known variables. So three variables that you know. And then you're going to have one unknown variable. And so since each of these equations has four variables, all you have to do is basically pick the equation that fits this unknown variable. So for example, maybe you were trying to solve a problem where you uh, had a problem where there's a vehicle traveling at an initial velocity of 70 kilometers per hour. And this vehicle was going to accelerate at 3 meters per second squared for a time or a length of time here um, of five seconds. And so what you wanted to solve for was during this acceleration, how far did it travel? And so you could see in this uh, example, I have three uh, known variables, one unknown variable. So what I like to do, and actually let me change the color here of this unknown variable to red. So what I like to do is I like to look at all four of my kinematics equations 
and try to match up by circling my known variables and my unknown variables to see which one's going to work best for me. Now, I want something that's going to give me the delta x. And so I can already see there's two possibilities here that could give me that. And so what I want to do is match up my known variables. And so I do know v initial, so I'm going to circle that in these two equations here. And I do know time, so I'm going to circle time in those two equations as well. And then the other thing I know is acceleration. And so there's acceleration. And so if I look at what I just did there, I eliminated this fourth equation as a possibility to use because I don't know the final velocity. This second equation though, as you can see, I've circled all the things I know and I'm just left with one unknown variable. In this fourth one, I have two unknown variables. So that's kind of a trick you can use to figure out which equation you want to use. Now just keep in mind that there are other ways to write these equations. So for example, if anywhere I see that delta x especially, sometimes you'll see this expanded to x final minus x initial because that is the same thing as delta x. So for example, we could even take this second equation of motion here. Here's my second equation of motion. I can expand this to x final minus x initial is going to be equal to all of this stuff over here. And so you can see there's a little bit more that I can do with this equation now in this form. I can actually solve for the final position of an object if I know the initial position. And even if I rearrange this a little bit, okay, if I wanted to move this initial position over here to the other side, I could add that to both sides of the equation here. That's going to eliminate it on this side. And I can end up with equation that looks like this. So I move that x initial over and so I have an equation that can solve for the final position of an object. So there's kind of a, you know a few things we can do with these equations to make them a little more useful as well. And that's basically the four kinematics equations. And just so you know in the next video I'm going to show you actually how to use these in solving a couple problems.